Hi, and welcome to another daily devotion. As this week we talk about how the, you know cultural icons like Marvel connect faith messages, and we see or can see our faith through that filter. Uh, and watching something that's culturally uh, part of uh, many of our lives. So uh, this day, I want to talk about one of my very favorite X-Men, Marvel characters, Nightcrawler. Now, unlike most of the mutants in the X-Men world of Marvel, Nightcrawler's mutation isn't something that can be hidden. He is always blue. He always looks, people debate whether he's an elf, a goblin, or a demon. He's a mutant, and he can't hide uh, how he looks. So he joins the circus for other freaks and unusual characters as people tell him that's where he belongs. And he says something very powerful when he's at the circus. He says, most people outside of the circus are afraid of me, but I didn't hate them. I pitied them. Do you know why? Because most people will never know anything beyond what they see with their own human eyes. It's this, there's more to a person beyond what's on the surface, but so often we judge just by how we look at somebody in an instant judgment about uh, their able-bodiedness, their coolness, whether they're beautiful or ugly, uh, whether they're like us or not. And we make those judgments all the time. Whether we're going to avoid somebody, whether they're safe, and I find that the storyline and arc of Nightcrawler always challenges us as people to look beyond our instant knee-jerk reactions of what makes a person who they are. Beyond the, the tone of their skin, and Nightcrawler's is certainly a, a, a powerful blue, but there's a there's a skin tone challenge there as well. And I got to thinking also about how quickly human beings are into body shaming, you know, uh, whether that's on social media or cyber bullying or in the locker room at school. Uh, the names that heavy set people are called as children or the ugliness that is put on somebody who's a boy who's more feminine or a girl who's more masculine and identity uh, shaming and all those kinds of things that happen that I hope are highlighted in this week when we, as a holiday, separate, celebrate uh, civil rights, but I, that work is far from done. So my holiday quotes is, is more, I hope it's a, an awareness to say, hey, we haven't arrived yet. And that's why I really like the Nightcrawler. He, Kurt Wagner, you find him in the very first episode uh, reading a Bible in, in an abandoned church up in the eaves of a Gothic cathedral, trying to figure out why there's so much fear and hatred of him uh, and struggling with, this is how I've been made. And yet the world and human beings have not accepted who I am. He talks to another mutant, Kitty Pride, and says, um, everyone repeat after me. When I look at humans to dictate who I am, who I should be, or how I should look, I reject who I am. I deserve life. I look exactly the way I'm supposed to look. And I hear in the Kurt Wagner's words, the words of Paul, am I trying to gain favor of people? Is this a popularity contest? No, I'm only out ideally to please God because God's the one who's made me. And the things I'm called to do, whether people stand up and applaud or they deride me 
and destroy me or seek to destroy me or call me terrible things. I know who I am because of who made me. And it's just, he's just such a powerful character. He has these interactions with Storm and so much anger. And somebody so beautiful says anger can be a powerful tool. And it can be, especially for people of faith, to get upset about things that are unfair, unjust. But Nightcrawler also says faith can be a powerful tool too. And um, he just always brings me back to center. So a, a little story before I close uh, about the Nightcrawler. Uh, when I was in high school, I think I may have told this on a devotion once before, there's a, a young man, two years younger than me, named Phil. Phil's uh, father was abusive. Phil's family was not around. And Phil would say, I just never know why God made me. I, I, I don't belong here. I'm not like the rest of you. And I said, you know, Phil, God loves you. God doesn't make junk. And, and Phil's response was, well, God made me. And I said, I didn't know what to say. He, his self-esteem was so low. And if I could have in that moment been Nightcrawler-esque as a, as a sophomore in high school, I would have said, hey, Phil, um, God has made you exactly who, how you were supposed to be made. And just because other people have made you feel this big and belittled and berated you doesn't mean that you're any less in the eyes of the one who has made you. As I think about um, the Preacher King's letters to Birmingham prison, he talks about in this heartbreaking kind of uh, dialogue in his speech about how he has to explain to his daughter why she can't go to Funland because Funland Amusement Park doesn't allow colored people. And he says he sees this clouds of inferiority and tears uh, developing in her young psyche at, at the age of six or seven. And how does she explain, how does he explain that ugliness to her? Other than to, to remind her again and again that she is beautifully and wonderfully made uh, in the eyes of God, no matter what people say and the, the ways that human beings just haven't learned yet how to see as God sees. We've got a lot of work to do, but I hope the Nightcrawler shows us, for those of us who've been on the receiving end of all those insults and labels, just how powerful faith can be to keep us grounded in who we are and whose we are. Amen. Amen.